and okay. And the thing is, this is a, a matchup where I would feel a lot better about the Jun player side of this, Daniel Rapson, if he had abrupt decays. Sure. Because sure. there's dictated crucifix, howling mine, and fever visions, all as high profile targets, and two mana versus three mana is a huge difference here. Well, Jeff is on the play, and he'll be targeted by Inquisition of Kozak. Let's see if I still got it with here with these cards. I got an Eye of Nowhere, a Fever Divisions, a Rune Flare Trap, a Howling Mine, an Island, and an Exhaustion in Jeff's hand. So I, I think from the jump player side, you really want to manage the effects that allow Hoagland to draw extra cards. He has cards like Exhaustion and Cryptic Command that sort of invalidate your entire turn, even if you have drawn extra cards. If Rapson can keep the game resource light, break up the extra card drawers, and then it's your boomerangs against my Tarmogoyves, I think Jun's got a really big advantage. Miko Koro, center of the sea is the draw. I think we might see a Eye of Nowhere. Get that Black Cleave Cliffs out of here, at least for right now. Sorcery Speed Boomerang, which, I don't know if you remember this. Arcane. There well, you go. Of course I do. Yep. I'm a little surprised for Hoagland to lead there because I would be concerned about if Rapson has another discard spell, he just replays the Black Cleave Cliffs and tags your Howling Mine, and then your hand's nothing. But I guess Hoagland's just putting a real premium on keeping Rapson from getting to two mana. If I was in Hoagland's position, I would really want to get the Howling Mine online, but I can't really say that I'm an expert with the strategy. Well, here's a Lightning Bolt that's going to go upstairs by Rapson, which means that Rapson will not have to discard. We'll go back over to Jeff now, who's picked up a Scalding Tarn. Perhaps now it's time to deploy the Howling Mine. Yes, it is. All right. So Howling Mine will resolve. We'll go back over to Rapson. Rapson will draw two cards. He gets to take advantage of this effect first. This is a Thought Seize. Jeff has a Rune Flare Trap and an Exhaustion in hand. We'll see which one of these Rapson would like to take. And Daniel will fall a little bit lower, and it looks like Rune Flare Trap will bite the dust. There's the Raging Ravine again, pass the turn back. Jeff will sacrifice a Scalding Tarn. And we'll see him dig land out of his deck, probably a Steam Vents. So now there's a, a lot of pressure here on Hoagland to uh, find either additional bounce spells or another card drawer, because Rapson's going to get to his Flashpoint most likely of, of two mana next turn and be able to start playing some of Jun's Marquee 2 drops with any luck. The Exhaustion can keep uh, Rapson off of that if, if Hoagland so chooses. If Hoagland bricks on these draw steps, it wouldn't shock me to see him just cast the Exhaustion. Simeon Spirit Guide among the cards drawn this turn for Jeff. And, and that's really why the, the additional card drawing cards like Howling Mine and Fever Visions are so important. We're each drawing two cards a turn. Well, if Hoagland's deck is chock full of things that shut off your whole turn, like Exhaustion and Cryptic Command, then it's really advantageous for, for, from his side of the table for both players to be drawing extra cards per turn. Now, I think one of the cards Jeff actually drew besides Simeon Spirit Guide was a copy of Dictated Crucifix, which is why I think he should simply pass the turn here. Rapson's going to play a Blood Crypt untapped. He'll fall a little bit lower to 16. And he has, I imagine, something to play. Ah, it looks like maybe not. As here's Dictated Crucifix. This is going to be a Kolagon's Command. Yep, he will play Kolagon's Command. Simeon Spirit Guide will be discarded. Holly Mine will bite the dust. Jeff will get to draw two cards here via the Dictate. And he's also picked up a copy of Fevered Visions within the cards that he has drawn. Is now the turn he wants to play Exhaustion? No, he'll just play Fever Divisions. Yeah, I like getting the Fever Divisions here online. Uh, you need to start clocking Raps in here. He's already done some of the work for you here uh, with the untapped Blood Crypt and such. And you really want to get the card drawers on the table and then start doing the Exhaustion and Boomerang stuff. Well, we'll see what comes next here for Rapson. Remember, he does have two copies of Maelstrom Pulse in his deck. And he will use one of those Maelstrom Pulse to take care of Fever Visions. Jeff will draw two cards. Invocation cast on the battlefield. Oh, for goodness sake. Are you kidding me? Huh. <laughs> what invocation? The Maelstrom Pulse. Does it have to be a permanent or no? Cast or on oh the... Oh, my... You're going to try to rules lawyer me on the invocation? It's early. It is early. <laughs> <laughs> it is early. Yeah. All right, you got the lead. 
Wraps him with a Raging Ravine. I didn't even know Maelstrom Pulse was an invocation. Here we go. All right, Bloodbraid off. Let's do a little bit of cascading, shall we? Liliana the Veil. Not a bad one to find. Remand on the Liliana. We'll put that back up. Jeff will draw a card. We'll probably see him activate Miko Koro soon, too. Bloodbraid Elf's going to come across for three. Wouldn't be a bad turn for Exhaustion, either. Nope. I, I mean, something like Exhaustion and another card drawer here, mm -hmm. and, and Hogo might start pulling ahead. Yep, there's another Dictate. So now Jeff is going to draw three cards. Cascade Bluffs among the cards in hand right now here for the man in the owl suit. Who's been playing this deck quite a bit on his stream recently. He'll play Exhaustion, which means that Rapson will not get to untap those permanents. And Rapson will draw three cards. He'll have some difficulty getting all these cards out of his hand, though. Might yeah, even have to discard some this turn. You are seeing, you know, Hoagland's deck start to hum here a little bit. He's going to activate Miko Koru. Both players will draw a card. Rapson will have to do some discarding, I imagine, here in just a moment. All right. A bunch of cards are going to go away. Jeff's going to untap. He'll draw three from the dictates and the draw step. A bunch of rune flare traps. Okay. Those might just wrap this game up, maybe? I think he has another Fever Visions, too. Deals. Uh, if opponent drew three or more cards this turn, you may pay red rather than pay rune flare, rune flare traps mana cost. That's a hard card to say. Rune flare trap deals damage to target player equal to the number of cards in that player's hand. Well. Wow. Yep. So next turn, Rapson's going to draw three, the two dictates plus his draw step, and will be tapped out, so he can actually just ding him in the draw step. Ah, I know where your, uh, your Bloodbraid Elf, that can kindly leave. And Jeff's got Rune Flare traps at the ready. Draw three, please. One, two, three. Stop you there, probably. Yeah. Uh, what is this? Is that Vision Skines? That is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. A couple of copies of Rune Flare Trap. All right. Jeff Hoagland's going to win <laughs> game number one here over Daniel Rapson. Owling Mine currently up a game here over Jund. This is really happening. Okay. This is a real thing that is happening. Mm -hmm. Um, these players are going to go to the sideboard. We'll be going to the sideboard, too, here in just a moment. But first, a couple of words from our sponsors. We are back to watch Jeff Hoagland and Daniel Rapson. Ali Mine versus John. Jeff Hoagland currently up a game here as we take a look at the sideboards. We'll start with Daniel Rapson, who's got three Ancient Grudge, three Full Major Mage, two Collective Brutality, a Jun Charm, a Kitchen Finx, and Olivia Voldaire in a Graft Digger's Cage, an Isle Spellbomb, a Knight of Souls Betrayal, and a Liliana, the Last Hope. I, I think the three Ancient Grudges here uh, is the big thing. Even if they aren't, even if Jeff Sank doesn't have a ton of artifacts in it, you need to interact with the Howling Mines, and it's something that can be done for one mana out of the graveyard. I, I wouldn't mind bringing the Fulminator Mages also, because Rapson has enough creature removal with, without targets. Other side of things here for Jeff. Let's take a look at what's going on with him. He's got four Chalice of the Void, four Anger of the Gods, two Thing of the Ice, two Nimble Obstructionist, a Karanos God of Storms, a Chandra Flamecaller, and a Counterflux. I'm not really that interested in anything here except for maybe the Karanos, just for a long game. Jun doesn't interact with that card all that well. Um, not really that interested in Thing of the Ice or Nimble Obstructionist. I guess the Counterflux maybe is above the board. There's a lot of expensive cards in Jund, but Rapson's probably shaving down on that post board, trying to make his deck a little bit leaner. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'd want the counterflux on the play. I don't think I'd want it on the draw. Yep. The Karanos, maybe the Nimble Obstructionist, but I doubt it. I'm going to take a look at my bingo board here to see if anything... Uh, cycle a card? You want cycle last game? No. No? Three spells on the... Nope. All right, you have the lead for now. For now. For now. For now. Two Merfolk Lords on the battlefield. What year is this, Nick? I have a player attacks with a sliver, which is also... <laughs> I think I'd rather have that than the Merfolk Lord one, but it's I both, think... it's, you know. Yeah, player attacks with a sliver is a bit much. Well, no, you just get a, you just get a Muta Vault. I don't want to count Changelings. 
That, that counts, whether you like it or not. I'm enforcing the rules against me now just because you won't like it. Okay. Any, any, uh... Changeling is just the answer to every... What, whoever is the least cool player at your FNM, okay. anytime someone's like, what's the most powerful warrior of all time? You know what I mean? And that there's that person who's like, it's Mutavault. Yeah. Or, yeah. or, you know, Chameleon Colossus, whatever. So I sort of just try to push back on the notion that it counts. Uh, Inquisition of Kozlek here is going to reveal a hand of boomerang exhaustion, fever division, simian spirit guide. Mikokoru, center of the sea, any steam vents. Just take the, just get these extra car drawers out of Hoagland's hand. I almost don't care what your hand looks like, just take the fever visions. Daniel Rapson did. Boomerang the draw. There's steam vents, pass. Boomerang, uh, Mikokoro, Simeon Spirit Guide is nice. That's a combo. That is really yeah, nice. That's, that's a combo. Here is a Tarmogoyf. And that's game. <laughs> <laughs> ah, scalding time to draw. We're back in it now. Uh, now with the second blue mana, Hoagland can swim upstream here for a couple turns. Yes. He'll pass the turn. Going to figure out just the right time to time that boomerang. Goyf right now a 3-4. There's a land of sorcery and an enchantment in the graveyard. Uh, if Rapson taps before combat, we might see Hoagland boomerang the Tarmogoyf right away and then just hope. Well, he'll boomerang it now before taking some damage. That Rapson didn't have a third mana. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's going to do this anyway. A little surprised. I, I, I think in Hoagland's spot, I might want to wait until end of turn. So the Tarmogoyf is back in Rapson's hand, at least for the moment. There's a Raging Ravine. There's Tarmogoyf. Let's go back over to Jeff. Remand the draw. Tarmogoyf a 4-5 now. If there's an instant in the graveyard. There's Miko Koru. And Jeff will just pass the turn back. No card drawing online yet here for our Owling Mind player. Back over to Raps and we go. Attack with Tarmogoyf. Jeff will take four. He's going to fall down to 15. That's the Liliana of the Veil. Vale. That'll be a remand on the Planeswalker. Jeff will draw a card. Picked up another Simeon Spirit Guide. Two of those in hand now. So he'll untap, and he'll draw. Perhaps we'll see Exhaustion this turn as he picks up a Cascade Bluffs. Well, the rest of it, I mean, it, this is sort of a rock and a hard place sort of deal. The exhaustion doesn't really do anything, but his hand is so bad that it's not clear if he can beat any sort of follow-up play. Mm -hmm. So you might have to exhaustion and just hope to draw pretty close to perfect from there. Jeff will just pass. Not going to fire off the exhaustion just yet as we go back over to Daniel. You can see this deck is very different when it doesn't have Fever Visions, Howling Mine, or Dictative Crucifix. I think you're going to see variations of this experience any time the play draw is flipped. Sure. This, this deck is so intense about how good it is, what, what the delta is on its draws when it's on the play versus on the draw. Liliana the Veil going to try to come down again. Fortunately, Jeff's deck with no shortage of easy discards in this spot. Yeah, a couple of Simeon Spirit Guides not doing all that much. Liliana will resolve. And looks like the elevator's going up. Jeff's already happy to discard. Got to be one of those Spirit Guides. Mm. Yep, and Rapson will discard a Kolagon's Command, which means his hand must be pretty good. Miko Koru, gonna draw a card. You're reaching for your bingo stamper, why? Well, five, six or larger Tarmogoyf, upper left. Okay. Okay. Here's Boomerang on Liliana, sure. Jeff will draw, not much of anything. Two lands and an exhaustion in hand. And there's Scalding Tarn. 
Here's exhaustion. This will prevent Daniel from being able to cast Liliana, attacking with Tarmogoy for Raging Ravine, and maybe doing much of anything here on this turn. You can see here, exhaustion with a wide range, anywhere from time walk to mulligan, mm -hmm. depending on what else is going on in the game. Yep. And when Jeff is kind of on the front foot there, drawing extra cards and bouncing lands, uh, it looks a lot closer to time walk. And when he falls behind and his card drawers are stripped out of his hand, it looks a lot like a mulligan. Then I'm going to search up a blood crypt. I suppose it's better to search it up untapped as opposed to tapped because it would not untap given the exhaustion. Yep. If he wants to use the man this turn, get it untapped. It, his life total is not a total freebie as we saw last game. Once Hoagland got the ball rolling, he was able to, to gut him down in one turn from 16 or 14, so he wants to be a little bit careful, but in, in this spot, I think a premium's on. Just get your mana. Jeff really far away from threatening anything of note with uh, Room Flare Trap. Another exhaustion. Head back over to Daniel. Jeff empty-handed, but has the ability to activate a Miko Koru. He'll sacrifice a Scalding Tarn, dig up a land, and we'll see him activate his legendary land here in just a moment. See Rapson already ready to draw his additional card. There's Jeff's draw from Miko Koru, and now his draw for the turn. Picked up an Owling Mine and an Island. And if you can't pin down Rapson's mana somehow with another exhaustion effect, you can't even feel very confident that this Howling Mine's going to do anything. Well, you just got to hope now. Going to play Howling Mine. Had the ability to activate Miko Koru, but we're going to go over to Rapson, who's now got all his mana available, drawing a couple cards for the turn. Remember, he's already discarded one Kolagon's command, which means he might already have another one as he attacks here for five. Looks like this is going to be maybe a lightning bolt, so there will be two of them. Well, that'll take care of this game. So, Daniel Rapson's going to win at game number two here over Jeff Hoagland. Jund and Ali Mind are going to get ready here for a third and final one. You can certainly tell the difference between being on the play and on the draw, as you mentioned. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, and I think it's a big deal here that Jeff won the initial die roll as now he gets the play for game number three. And we saw in, in game number one what some of that looks like. If you're, if you're boomeranging and, and getting your card drawers online, uh, those exhaustion effects become so much more potent. Well, game number three underway here in just a Game number three about to be underway here between Jeff Hoagland and Daniel Raps and Ali Mine and John. That's your first match of the day here from SCG Milwaukee at SCG Tour. Hashtag SCG MKE all weekend long for your tweets as we've got nine rounds of modern action to bring to you. And we've got a lot of Dominaria cards we've got to go over, Patrick. we got a lot yep. to do today. Well, there's a turn one Howling Mine. That's why you see the Simeon Spirit guys in Jeff's deck. Yeah. And what are the, now the question is, what do we have for Leto?
Here's an Inquisition. Here's the leftovers. Fever Divisions, Boomerang, Remand, and Cryptic Command. What you'll find there is no second land, and Jeff is rubbing his hands together, hoping that he does draw one off of his Howling Mine. Well, and it has to be kind of particular mana. I suppose if you draw any land at all and it turns on the Remand, that's not the end of the world. But, but Hoagland definitely hunting for a, a blue source of mana here. That turns on a Boomerang. And then kind of past that, you need a red source of mana, too, for the Fever Visions and the follow-up. So uh, any second land here is acceptable, but I think Jeff would, in particular, like one of his dual lands. Fever Visions down. Miko Koru is the land. It's not a blue land for Boomer or anything like that, but it is a land nonetheless, which means that Jeff can cast Remand. Right. So if I'm Raps in here, unless I can cast two spells in one turn, I'm not casting anything because you do not want Jeff to cycle into his third mana and really get the ball rolling. If you have, you know, a discard spell and you can cast it on the follow-up, that's one thing. But if this is a two-mana creature of some sort, just pass the turn. Well, there's a collective brutality. It's not a two-mana creature, but it is a two-mana spell that gets remanded. I guess brutality is kind of the the middle ground there because you can't, you certainly don't want to escalate it into the face of a romance, so it's a, a fine spell to lead with, but letting Hoagland cycle there is not free. Dark Confident will be discarded. Here is a second Howling Mine, and we'll see if Daniel wraps and as he draws not one, not two, but three cards, has one of those two copies of Maelstrom Pulse. I don't think it would be taking this long if he did. I'm inclined <laughs> to agree with you. Although a slow roll here is also great in its own way. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. It's uh, a Liliana the Veil. Not a card that Hoagland is that concerned about. He's got a lot of material to discard here. And uh, he's drawing three cards a turn. Now, you do want to get out from under this thing before it goes ultimate. Of course. But the taxing of his hand right now, that's not a, a, a huge concern for Hoakland. Steve Metzl under the battlefield untapped. Here's a copy of Fevered Vision. So Jeff is going to be drawing all the cards, and so will Daniel. Jeff will draw two right now on the end step because of Fevered Visions. Or excuse me, just one. But now we go to Rapson, who will draw three cards. Fevered Visions is almost certainly going to deal Daniel two damage at the end of this turn. This would also not be a bad spot for those sideboarded Ancient Grudges, too. Yep. Premium amount of efficiency. Although even with one draw effect, I think Hoagland can get the, the ball really rolling. But if Rapson can't get these card draws off the table, he is just in a ton of trouble. Well, here's Collective Brutality with Escalate. Jeff's hand, a couple copies of Vision Skines. Cryptic Command, Boomerang, Exhaustion, and a Scalding Tarn. If you can't blow up these card drawers, as painful as it is, I think you've got to fight over the exhaustion effects. Okay. They, they, they are too impactful if Jeff is drawing four cards a turn. He'll take the exhaustion. Treetop Village is the land for the turn. Here's a lightning bolt, so Rapson maybe doesn't have to discard at all. Got to do something with that Liliana, too. You gotta threaten the ability to go ultimate here. It puts Hoagland under some pressure to at least use the cryptic command to draw a card or some such. Or well, to there. bounce rather. There's your activation. Jeff already knows what he's gonna discard. He'll discard Vision Skines. Daniel will discard Scavenging Ooze. And we're gonna head back over to Jeff here in just a moment. Jeff will draw a bunch of cards. Mostly lands there, which is something actually Daniel needs to have happen. So Cascade Bluffs and Island, and I believe a Simeon Spirit guy is what Jeff picked up this turn. He'll play Cascade Bluffs. Now draw a card from Fevered Visions. if Jeff has anything else he wants to do now since he's drawn that card off of your vision. Still has priority on his end step. Might want to cast a boomerang here. Looks like he does want to play a boomerang. And he'll target Liliana. Okay. So now we're going to go back over to Daniel who will draw his three cards. 
And we'll see what he wants to do. I mean, the battle here is can he find and then successfully resolve either Maelstrom Pulse or Ancient Grudge? Mm -hmm. Here's Tarmogoyf. There is, I believe, Maelstrom Pulse. Yes. It'd be weird if it wasn't Maelstrom Pulse. Yeah. So this is going to be a boomerang targeting the Howling Mind that Maelstrom Pulse was targeting. So oh, he's tapping the that. Cascade Bluffs for double blue. Correct. Through the Simeon Spirit Guide. That is correct. Fancy. Combo. As you like to say. That is a combo. Yeah. Jeff will draw. Looks like he's found a copy of Rune Flare Trap. And that just might be enough to get it done next turn along with the Fever Vision trigger. Yeah, and the, and the Vision Scans. Yeah. That's why I mentioned before, Rapson, you know, you want to get your lands untapped, but your Light Toll isn't totally free in this matchup. Hoagland's trying to one-shot you. And, you know, it, it looks like Dealing 10 or 12 is not that hard, but dealing 16 or 18 might be more challenging. Yep. Jeff will pass. Two cards here for Daniel Rapson, given the Howling Mine. Only one of them on the battlefield right now. And Jeff just... Patiently waiting, has Cryptic Command in hand as well in case anything goes horribly wrong. Rune Flare Trap isn't on just yet. So Rapson's going to try to get a lot of cards out of his hand if he can. The fire of Treetop Village. Well, this, this is, is even a better bad for Jeff. sign. Yeah. <laughs> this is your turn. Yeah, this is even better for Jeff. Jeff's going to just say, tap all your things, draw a card, most likely. Lightning Bolt in response. And bounce that land. And yeah, so tap your creatures, bounce a permanent. Those are the modes on Cryptic Command there. Yeah, if firing up treetop village, what's going on? You're Not done. Good. Yeah, you're yeah, done. You're done. <laughs> and, um, Rapson might just be passing the turn here too. Who knows? Don't think he's playing a land yet. All right, he'll play a blood crypt on tap. That's even better for Hoagland. This is Tarmogoyf. Fever Vision is going to occur. That's card number three. That is card number three. No, uh, no Rune Flare Trap, though. Surprising. Ebony now that Suitcase. And Remand. See, we have here. Is this Howling Mine? Or Howling Mine, excuse me. If Jeff went to all the trouble of getting this stupid suit, he's definitely going to cast the Owl if he has the window that's to report. That's all true. that he's debating. Do I expose myself to getting myself killed somehow if that's how I spent some of my mana? That's probably true. And he's just going to pass the turn. Not safe. Yeah. Two. Here's Vision Skines. Means both players will draw three cards. What a deal. And now here's Rune Flare Trap to end it. Or at least try to. Those Tarmac guys are really large. There's a Lightning Bolt. Okay. I don't think Rapson can get all these cards out of his hand. I would be surprised. Yeah. He's got that many instants in a Jun deck. That's going to do it. Jeff Hoagland's going to win this match over Daniel Rapson. Two games to one. Howling Mine is going to win this match over Jund. And all jokes aside, this actually does look like a, a pretty good matchup here for Jeff. All right. Well, Jeff.